Today, we're going to be making a pop can. We start off by deleting the cube, and then I add in a reference image. Um, this is a, just, I went to the internet and searched for aluminum can. I didn't want to use like the traditional can, so I came up with this one. It's a little longer and thinner. It seems to confuse a lot of people by being longer and thinner. <clears throat> So once we have the reference image added in, and you'll notice that I um, pressed on numpad three so that I have the proper um, angle, viewpoint angle. And uh, then we're setting it to the front. So it's gonna be in front of our, our mesh and I'm making it transparent 50%. Then I add a cylinder. I change the end pan points to, or the caps to triangular fan. That's important. Um, by doing it this way, um, Blender 2.8 already has all the mesh unwrapped, so we don't have to worry too much about unwrapping. It makes life easy. So at this point, I'm making sure that the diameter of my shape matches the diameter of my reference image. And then I'm going to adjust the top here a little bit. And you notice here that I'm going to grab these top vertices by using alt um, right click I hope it is um, I've switched to the left click instead of the right click so I guess it's left click now I changed because on all of my other programs it's a left click and it was really confusing me to go to right click all the time in blender so I've made a new loop by pressing control R and now I'm going to slide the original loop in. I'm doing this because the point in the middle and then the, the diameter outside, the outside loop, um, is not a true edge loop. And now that I've slid this one in the middle, I can select points between those two loops and make new loops. As before, with only one point in the middle, you couldn't do that. It wouldn't work. I've noticed here that my center dot isn't at the same height. So I'm restricting the movement to the z-axis and snapping to a vertice, and I just picked one that was at the right height. So now all of these vertices are at the right height. Now I start making more edge loops. This is for the top rim of the can. <clears throat> and then just inside the top of the can, there's kind of a valley with a little lip on it. So I'm building that up next. It's just a matter of making these edge loops and then positioning them to the appropriate depth and width. And you'll also notice that by moving these up and down, the top of my can is not going to be completely level. And it's really easy just to select everything and then scale in the z-axis to zero and it'll line up everything. But it's really not so important because the top of the can isn't going to be a feature of my final render. In a lot of ways, I don't really even need to do this top um, geometry, but I wanted to show how that you can how you can um, model the top here and use edge loops. And I'll be repeating this on the bottom of the can as well. So here I switched to a different. Um, mode so that you can see through all the, the vertices and uh, polygons allows you to, to see what's going on better it's, it's good to switch back and forth as you need when you're modeling so now i'm turning on met caps met caps um, really allow you to see shadows and valleys so you notice i turn on the shadows and the cavity um, lighting so I can really see what's going on here in this little valley. And you also notice how that the, the circle of the uh, can isn't perfect. You can see that it's made out of a whole bunch of straight edges. We'll fix that later by adding um, a subsurface modifier, which just basically subdivides everything into little bits and smooths it out. But we don't want it to be perfectly smooth here. We want a solid crease. And so I'm selecting these edge loops and I'm setting the crease to one, which means full crease. 
and you won't really see the effect of that until I add the subsurface modifier later. But it's just easier to do it at this point. Right here, I'm thinking that I need a little uh, kind of an oval shaped top, but then I realize in a second here that I actually don't need it right there, I need it on the side. So then I go to the side view, click in another edge loop. And a lot of modeling is just problem solving as you go along. You realize, oh, this isn't the way it should be. And maybe I've got to go get another reference image off the internet and see what it should look like. So. It's, it's not just really a linear process. It's a lot of problem solving as you go and trying to think about how can I put this together. It's a bit like using Legos. So right here, I'm wondering why in the world can I not see my reference image? And what I've managed to do is actually rotate the can so that I'm edge on to the reference image and I can't see it. And after a minute here, I'm gonna figure that out. And also, you can't see your reference image if you're not in the right mode. So, now I want to be able to see my can. Make it better, a better transparency so I can see better. And now it's just a matter of uh, using Control R to make more edge loops sliding the edge loops to the appropriate position and scaling them. At this point I've realized that the top isn't at the proper scale, so, or, well, it's coming. I'm going to scale this in here. Right here's a transition point in the curve. So that's the point you need it. So here I'm selecting everything on the top and I'm scaling it to the appropriate size. And now you can see on either side that curve that I was talking about. So I need to subdivide that shape and um, scale a little bit bigger so that we get this nice rounded curve that you see on the top of all aluminum cans. And now just bringing in more geometry, going to match the, the big shape of the can here. And right now it's starting to look pretty can-like. It's not perfect. Um, I still need to go up there and uh, pull that in a bit. And there's kind of a, a lip. On the top of the Coke can, it kind of goes like this and it folds under. This, com this comes up this way, like this way underneath. So I'm going to have to shove a loop up into here also to make sure that all comes out correctly. And so now I'm doing the bottom. The bottom also um, is flat the whole way. And then right here, there's just a little place where it starts to curve in a little bit. It's very subtle. Got to scale the bottom. Again, using Alt click to get the whole bottom. And you can see I'm leaving that, that middle point again, but I'm not too worried about it. And so actually I'm going to grab it right here and I'm again going to snap to the point and I'm using um, shift Z so that it can only move on the Z axis. Otherwise it would snap right to the other point, which we don't want. So now I need to do the, the same edge loop thing that I did before on the top. Make an edge loop, put it where the old one was, collect select the old edge loop and you can see it's selected because it lights up the, the uh, rays going towards the middle point there and now I shrink that down really small and then I can start doing new edge loops between those two and again on the bottom of the coke can there's kind of this um, kind of a, a domed shape it helps keep the pressure in the can and it also um, makes it sit more flatly on surfaces. So now I'm putting in the subsurface. I 
I choose I chose um, to do smooth instead of the standard mesh outline so smooth out all the corners and now you can see it's starting to look pretty good it's really good to always inspect your model from different angles and different viewpoints sometimes especially as a newbie you're gonna um, select vertices that you didn't know you selected and move them um, without knowing you've moved them and then half an hour later you're gonna find that the whole other side of your model has been wrecked because you did something stupid <clears throat> so always look around a bit you can save yourself a lot of headaches that way make sure you've selected what you think you've selected and as you get better you start making these mistakes a lot less often In this video, I'm not going to do it, um, but later on, I select. Um, I want to make the mesh have more uh, polygons so that the particle system works better. So we'll probably do that in the next video. And here, I'm just doing the same thing of selecting edge loops and increasing the crease. And now that we've got subsurface turned on and smooth, you can really see how the um, the mesh changes from what, what the actual geometry is, is making. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. I'm fairly happy with it at this point. I want to sharpen up a few more edges. <clears throat> also, I noticed that this whole top um, is way too tall. It all needs to be selected and brought down a little lower on the z-axis. And you notice I didn't use a full one crease there, I used a partial crease because I want that still to be rounded but not as rounded as it would be without the crease. Sometimes getting into these spots down there can be, it's really difficult to see. So you can use um, your see-through mesh or your x-ray or you can turn off the subsurface temporarily and turn it back on different methods to, to get into these tight spaces <clears throat> If you notice, <coughs> I'm sure. <coughs> Sorry, I live in Germany. I speak German half my life. Um, if you notice, I'm blinking a lot. I just spent the whole day in a chlorinated pool, and um, now there's no lights in this room. I normally use sunlight, but the sun's gone down. So, being winter in Germany, the sun goes down really early. Um, so, I got really bright light shining in my face. So there, yeah, the top's starting to look better. Like I said, it's really not that important yet. Um, and I'm not going to bother with all the hole in the top. We could we could model all of that, and it'd be fairly easy to do, but it would take a long time, and it's not important for my final product. Um, it's a very important thing as you're modeling to leave out geometry that doesn't get um, photographed. For example, if you're doing an outdoor scene and you have a huge central tree, don't model the back of the tree. Just model the front of the tree. Otherwise, you're giving your, your graphics processor or your CPU a lot more geometry to deal with. Slows down your render time, uses more memory, and unless the camera's going to go behind the tree, you don't need it. With all of these um, different types of lighting methods in this mode, you can vary which direction the light is coming from. That can be really important to get uh, shadows where you want the shadows so that you can see what you're doing. So now I'm going to add in um, aluminum color. And I just searched on the internet, aluminum color, hex, or RGB, and almost anything that you want to color, somebody's already figured out the correct numbers. So don't waste your time trying to guess, just go find it. So I'm just going to copy and paste. So I paste it into Blender here. 
<clears throat> Picking a different type of HDR lighting to see how my can looks, and it's looking a lot like aluminum. Pretty happy with it. However, the roughness isn't that good. You can see that cans are not that flat, they're shinier. But I don't actually know how shiny. And so I'm going to go take a look here in a second and figure out just uh, what it should really look like. So I'm kind of making a guess that that's about what a can should look like. So now I open up my browser to my collection of coke images, bottle images, can images. And you see there I have a top of a can. I was thinking about modeling that and decided, nah, I don't want to model the top of a can. But here's my original reference image. And we can see what it should look like. And I guessed fairly closely, but not close enough. I need to be a little rougher. So when you're doing this, um, never touch the specularity. The specularity of 0.5 is usually perfect. In the very, very, very rare instance where you need to adjust your specularity, um, you probably have already learned enough to know that you need to do that. So just use the roughness. I'm going to try a different lighting, see how it looks. Yeah, and I think that looks a lot like a raw aluminum can. Pretty happy with it. So, as always, support me on Patreon. Um, I still have yet to get my first supporter. It's really important to me. Um, and, of course, Click the little bell on uh, YouTube and subscribe to the channel, share on social media, all the usual stuff. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate everybody who's um, been helping me with this and to, to make new videos. And um, if you have any questions, please write me. Um, I try to answer every single person that writes to me. So thank you. Have a good day. Bye.